Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Kingdom Cash, Charles Dyson. And listen, I wanted to go ahead and record this video for you guys. Uh, we're going to have a conversation about finances and a couple of realizations that I had that, you know, really began to force me to decide to elevate quicker, okay? And maybe you have heard this information before, maybe you haven't. But uh, this is something that you really need to think about. I want to talk to you about living life by default versus living life by design. Now, first of all, if you don't know who I am, again, I'm Mr. Kingdom Cash, Charles Dyson, married to my wonderful, beautiful wife, Lady Kingdom Cash, Christina Dyson. I've uh, been married for 10 years. Uh, we live in a beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. We have 10 children and um, help people all over the world uh, make money from home, make money from their cell phone. But this information right here is what led us to move our life in the direction that I'm going to talk to you about toward the end of this video. And um, if anything, if you don't get anything from watching this video, uh, my main goal is to help you think, to get to a place where you're thinking about your life, you're thinking about the type of life you want to live, and you're making decisions that will lead you to moving your life towards that ideal uh, experience in life, right? Because you only get, you know, this time on earth is brief, right? You get to spend it however you want. Life is made up of time. So if you don't start making the right decisions about how you want to use your time, somebody's gonna make that decision for you. So living life by default, right? 97% of people on the planet do what I'm about to explain over the next few minutes. You get money, right? You have a job, you got a business, you make money. And where have we all been taught to put our money? What do we do with it? We put it in a bank, in a checking account. And usually what you do after that is you take that money and then you do what? You pay bills. And you got all these bills. You got your mortgage or your rent. You got uh, water, gas, electric. You got uh, student loan bills, you got your car insurance, your car note, you got Netflix, you got your streaming service, you got babysitting fees, you got parking, all right? You got all these different things that you're paying for. And I came to this realization a few years ago, you don't really have one job, family. If you're paying bills and you have one source of income, then most likely you got 13, 14, 15 jobs because you're taking the money that you make that represents the time you spent working for the money. And then you take that and you just distribute it between these multi-million dollar corporations, these fortune 500 companies, these industries and these companies that make billions of dollars a year. You are a part of their financial ecosystem where you go to work, you make money, and then you disperse it. And if you're blessed, you got something left over, but most people don't. The statistic is seven out of 10 people in America are living paycheck to paycheck. That's the reality of the situation, okay? It's the truth. But but here's, here's what you got to understand, right? The next thing that we're taught is what do you do with the money that you have left over? You, usually, you want to save some of it. And where do you save it? At the same place you got the checking account, you save it in the bank, right? And that money uh, earns way less than this, but let's just, for example purposes, say that that money, if you park it in a savings account, will get you 1% per year. Like I said, it's going to be way less than that, but for example purposes, let's just say 1% of a year that you'll earn on your money that you park into a savings account. Now, Let's just say life happens, right? Your car, something takes place and your car goes down. So now you got a problem. So you go to the bank, right? Let's just say you were able to save $10,000, okay? You go to the bank and you say, hey, uh, I wanna make a withdrawal of $10,000 out of my savings account. They, Whoa, they're like, wait a minute. Why are you withdrawing $10,000 out of your account? Now, first of all, that's none of their business, but they ask you anyway, right? See, what you need to understand about these banking institutions is 
is it really your money? Is it, is it, can you access it? You can go to YouTube and look up videos of people going into the bank, trying to make withdrawals of 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand, a million dollars at one time. And it's a process to touch your money. So once it's in the bank, is it your money? How fast can you get it if you need it? Something to think about, right? But you 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 want to make a withdrawal ten thousand dollars out of your account, your money. And they're gonna ask, wait, why? Why do you need to withdraw? Well, I got a problem with my car, it went down, I gotta go buy a new car. And what's the banker gonna do? We got we got the solution for you. You don't have to take your money out. We'll give you the money. We'll we'll give you a loan to go get a car. Right? Yeah, we'll just give you the money. That way you can keep your ten thousand dollars in your savings account and you can take our auto loan and go get your car. We'll give you that loan at a six percent interest rate. Right? Six percent interest rate. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about this for a second. If you're earning 1% from having your money in that savings account, but they're making 6% from you paying for that auto loan, who's winning? From the bank's perspective, I'm giving you 1%, but I'm going to take 6% from you. They're winning, right? They're winning. Now, how much are they getting from that? What's their return on investment? And many of you probably did what I did the first time I heard this. I said, oh, that's easy. 6% minus 1%. They're getting 5%. That's not how return on investment works, family. <laughs> See, the bank from this simple scenario, the bank is going to make a 600% return on investment. <laughs> Do you understand why banks have the tallest buildings in these cities around the world? Do you understand why they're so wealthy? This is why. 600%. This is just from one person. They got millions of customers, don't they? Right? Now watch this. This is what the bank does with your $10,000. The bank is going to take your $10,000, right? And this is what they can legally do. It's called fractional reserve spending. They're going to take your $10,000 and they're going to go ahead and loan it out to six other people. That's why they don't want you to take your $10,000 and go buy a car. No, 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 no. They would rather give you the loan, right? Right? keep the 10,000. So they're making 6% from you, but then they're going to go take that same 10,000 that is your money. They're going to take it from you and go loan it to six other people and do the same exact thing. Again, they're going to give a auto loan. They're going to give a, a mortgage loan, right? So how much money does the bank make on that? How much money does the bank make on that? So you and you and six other people, that would be seven people, right? And let's just say they're making that 600%. Well, family, that's 4,200% return on investment. Percent. Not dollars. Percent. That's what I need you to understand. This is how the bank makes hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Okay. What you got to understand is your savings account is the bank's lending pool. Right? That's that's where they pull the money from to go lend it out. And when you come into the bank and you want to make a withdrawal of $100, $200 out of your savings account, $500, $1,000, no problem. They can just pull that out the drawer right then and there. You want to touch $10,000? You want to touch $100,000 of your money? Oh, uh, sir, ma'am, there's a process for that. It's going to take a few days. They literally got to go order the money. They don't want to give you the money. They don't want you to take the money out the bank. Now, think about this. Let's really think about this. What do rich and wealthy people do with their money? Like, where does a person with a $50 billion 
cash reserve, where, where do they put their money? You ever thought about that? Where do rich people store their money? Let me ask you a question. Do you think they store it in a bank? Do you think that's where they're going to keep it? Hmm? Because they're not, they're not going to keep it in the bank. Right? No wealthy people store their assets. Now, this is where you got to really pay attention. Wealthy people store their money in something called assets. Okay? That's where they store their money. Now, here's the conversation that you have to have with yourself. This is this is where decision-making time takes place. This is what me and Lady King of Cash came to the re realization of. If we keep operating this system right here, if we keep operating the system that I just explained to you, right, where you get the money, you put it into a checking account, pay bills, you save some, right? This is what the 97% around the world do. And to know something but not do it is to not know it all. So even if you've heard this information before, but yet you still operate this system, well, family, that's why the middle class has disappeared. This is why so many people are having financial trouble. This is why so many people are struggling. They can't figure it out because money is a blueprint. And once you figure out what the blueprint is, it's your responsibility to decide to follow the money blueprint. But if you don't follow the money blueprint and you only do what you've been taught, the default living, if you only live by default, then family, you don't stand a chance. You literally can't get wealthy because you're not operating the principles of wealth. What do wealthy, what the, what do, wealthy people do? They own assets. That's what they do. They take their money and they store it in assets. Right? So default living is 100% of your money gets broken up three ways. A third of your money is used to pay taxes. A third of your money is used to pay interest through loans. And a third of your money is yours to live life. This is how 97% of the people in the world live. What's a third of a year? Four months, right? So four months out the year, your work, your labor, your money is going towards taxes. And the other four months out the year, your life is spent paying interest to loans that you've taken out, student loans, credit card bills, and other different, other different types of loans. And then you got life. And then there's the secret tax of inflation, right? But people who live their life by design, the wealthy, they choose to pay 10% in taxes. They choose to only pay 10% in the form of interest towards loans. And then the other 80%, they get to enjoy life because they're, they're living life by design. They've changed their habits towards money. And, and like I said, to know and not do is to not know at all. You can know that you need to buy assets, but if you never buy assets, what are you doing? You're living life by default. It's the reason why I used to work a job and one job wasn't enough. So I went and got two jobs and thought it was going to get better. And now I got two incomes and I'm making money from two different sources. But yet it still wasn't enough. So what did I do? I did what I know. I went and got a third job. Surely if I'm working three jobs, it'll be great. I'm going to have another extra stream of income. It'll be awesome. Didn't help. Three different jobs, working seven days a week, working 80 hours a week. Didn't help didn't help at all. I was struggling. Right? So what did, what what had to change? What did I have to do different? I had to acquire some different 
information from people who are really doing well. And then that's how I increase my income. But now in this part of my life, I'm starting to understand even that's not enough because guess what? I'm still working this system. This is why we made the change. Okay, we got to literally do what the wealthy people do. We got to go get some assets. Now, back to default living. When you live your life by default, well, what's the top, excuse me, what's the top five pay, what's the top five places that people put their money by default? Where have you been taught to store your money when you make it? Where have you been taught that you need to put your money in order for it to grow? Okay, checking account, savings account, we already discussed that. A CD, right? You can get a CD through the bank, you can get stocks, 401ks, right? Or at home under the mattress. Top five places that people who live by default, this is what you do with your money, right? This is what you do with your money. So if you did that, what is the return on investment for doing this, right? What, what happens if you keep your money in these places? Well, we already discussed this. You're only going to get 1% on your money if you kept it in a checking or savings account. 1% on your money. If you kept it in a CD, you're going to get about 3% per year on your money. If you keep your money in stocks, there's a possibility you can lose it all. So you might not get anything. But... On average, people make about 6% per year in stocks. And if you store it under your mattress in the house, technically you're not even making 0%. The rate of inflation is eating your money. So you're negative. You lose money by saving. You lose money by keeping your money in your checking account. You lose money by keeping your money in your savings account. You lose money by keeping your money in the CD. You lose money by keeping your money in stocks and 401ks because the rate of inflation is higher than all these percentages. So living life by default, you can't win, is what I'm telling you. you. You literally can't win. But to drive this point further, there's something called the rule of 72, all right? The rule of 72 states that if you do this simple math equation, it'll tell you how many years it would take for your money to double, right? How many years would it take for your money to double? So 72 divided by 1%, family is going to take you 72 years for your money to double. If you kept it in a checking account, and also 72 years for your money to double if you kept it in a savings account. But what about that CD? 72 divided by 3%, it'll take 24 years for your money to double if you kept it in a CD. Doesn't sound too promising. If you had a perfect year in stocks every year, okay, at 6%, it would take you 12 years for your money to double. And if obviously you kept it in the, in the house underneath the mattress, right, you're not earning any percent. So it doesn't matter. Your money won't double. This is the problem. This is why... People struggle because the information that we operate by, the masses operate by, you're taught to do things with your money that do not work. And yet when you get assets, it's possible to make a hundred percent return on your money over and over again in one year. 50% return on your money. Right, even 30% return on your money, 15, 20% return on your money. See, this is what I realized 90% of them of uh millionaires in America were created through real estate. 90%, okay. I need you to pick up the clue, family. 90% of millionaires in America were created through real estate. And over the last four weeks, since Christina and I have made the decision 
to focus on acquiring assets because that's what wealthy people do. That's what rich people do. I now understand why they're so wealthy. I get it. Because you can do things in real estate that you just can't do in other investment classes. Okay. Real estate is the only asset class in the world where you can create instant wealth as soon as the transaction is complete. If you can purchase a $100,000 house, a house that's worth $100,000 for $40,000, then that means you've created $60,000 worth of equity or $60,000 worth of wealth, okay? And by the way, you don't have to use your own $40,000 to acquire that property. You can use somebody else's $40,000. doesn't have to be yours. You don't need money or credit to do real estate. That's the two things that most people think they need. You, don't, you need $0 to do real estate. And you do not need your own credit. Okay. 90% of Americans cannot qualify for a loan right now. No bank in the country will give them a loan. 90% of Americans. What does that mean? That's an opportunity for people who have the right information. Because if they can't get a loan from the bank, then they have to work with you if you're the owner of a property. It gives you amazing leverage. There's pretty cool things like you can make money from empty houses. You don't even have to rent the house out. The house could be empty and you still can make money in real estate. When, when the economy is bad and inflation is high, rich people get richer. Let me repeat. <laughs> when the economy is bad and inflation is high, rich people get richer. Isn't that the conditions we're in today? Isn't that the conditions we're in today? Let me explain something to you. A few years ago in America, COVID happened and people got stimulus checks to help, right? What happened? Like, just think about it. What did you do with your stimulus check? Do you still have that money today, two years later? Were you able to make money on that money? You know what happened? People went shopping. And guess what? The companies knew you were going to go shopping. So that's what. guess what they did? They raised their prices intentionally because they knew you had the money. So where did all that money go? To the people who own the businesses where you shopped at. And who owned those businesses? It wasn't poor people. Wealthy people, rich people owned those businesses. So by giving the masses money, the rich got richer. You see how that works? This is why you want to be an owner of things. You want to have assets. Because when you have assets, you get richer. And 90% of millionaires were created through real estate. Why? Because your own assets. Okay. It's it, all I'm saying is it spells opportunity. In the last four weeks, I've heard some of the most amazing testimonies. People, what would you do if you could acquire a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house for one dollar? One dollar. Instant wealth. Instant wealth creations. Okay. You don't need you know, no money, no credit. Okay. There's people who own 30 houses, 40 houses. There's a gentleman, one of my mentors, he he owns 45 houses, he makes forty-five thousand dollars a month. And last year all of his properties increased by a million dollars. What does that mean? His net worth went up $1 million just because he owns the properties. Today, I got off a webinar with the individual who had 450 doors 
That means he had 450 units he was collecting rent on. He sold 100 of those units, making millions of dollars in the process, and still has 350 other doors that he's collecting rent on. You would be, as a real estate investor, you would be creating a new foundation of knowledge that you can monetize for the rest of your life. And it's wealth that can be transferred to your children. You can't transfer jobs. You, you can't transfer your job to your children. Remember, wealthy people acquire assets. So I had to make the decision to go acquire assets. Now, the easiest way to do that, right? The, the easiest way to do something you've never done before is to be taught by people who are doing what you want to do. Not go out and make mistakes, lose money, figure it out on your own. But surround yourself with people who have a heart to help you, who have the correct information, and who want to prevent you from making the mistakes that they've made and can guide you straight to the success. That's what, this is how my wife and I began changing our life 10 years ago. This is how we're going to do it right now with this industry that we've decided to jump into. Right? It is, it, it is such a simple concept, okay? There are 140 million buildings in America. 140 million buildings. How many of those buildings do you need to never have to work again? How many? And the interesting thing about this like I said before, I'm going to say it again. You don't need your own money. You don't need your own credit in order to do this. All you need is a knowledge base. You have to get knowledgeable. You have to learn from those who have the right information and then apply it. So I just wanted to take time out to go over some of this information with you guys and, uh, If you heard what I said in this webinar, in this video, right? You're watching this on Facebook inside of my group. Uh, there's going to be a link somewhere around this video. Click that link, fill out the form, and I'll call you and we'll have a conversation. I'll show you how you can get involved and begin traveling this path. If you're watching this on YouTube, right? Check the description box of this video, right? Fill out the form and you're gonna take an extra step if you're on YouTube. I want you to go to cashsleeprepeat.com, cashsleeprepeat.com, cash is spelled with a K. That link will be at the top of the description box. That's gonna lead you straight into the Facebook group where this video is also located. But in the pinned section of this video, excuse me, in the pin section of this Facebook group is a video expounding upon a, a couple of other things, right? But what I want you to do is I want you to click the link around this video to fill out the form and that will put you in contact with me, right? You'll receive a phone call from me directly or email from me directly and I'm going to get you educated about how you can actually start traveling this path towards acquiring some assets and completely change your life financially. Mr. Kingdom Cash, Charles Dyson, thank you so much for listening. And like I always say, I know if I can help you change your perspective, I can help you change your life. Be blessed. Jesus' name.